They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Woods Equipment Company. Has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hi, Mr. Farmer. How are you? We're cooking outdoors again. Because it's so nice out. It is so nice out. And you know what? It's a little bit warm, but who wants to cook in the house? Right. Now, we've got some grilling stuff coming up and some barbecue and stuff coming up. Got Yum. to do that this time Yummy. of year as well. But we've been doing a lot of cooking outside. Now, the great thing about the 12-inch lodge pan is the fact that we can put a lot of stuff in there you can mm -hmm. stack it, you can do what you want, and you can walk away. Now, you might have to come back to check and see if your charcoal was burnt down and put some right. more on there, or some pieces of wood, which are natural coals. Let's talk about the fact that when we're cooking, a lot of times it's three, 350 degrees. Just about everything. If you're using regular charcoal, briquettes, mm -hmm. how many on the bottom? Seven, 18, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 26? I, the total is 25. So you're close. Okay. 17 on the top because the top's a bigger okay. area. Eight on the bottom. See, that's your job. That's my job. Turn out the charcoal. That's right. But you know what? It, it's an oven. Again, mm -hmm. we did something last week. We showed you five recipes. We got so much response. We've got so much response to the cowboy cooking, Dutch oven cooking, whatever you want to call it, that we're going to continue to do this until you tell us to do otherwise. It's camp time. It's camp time. It's camp time, and you can do this in your own backyard. Right. Now, if you don't have a situation where you can actively go outside and do this, your oven applies. 350 right. degrees in your oven is the same as 350 degrees in here. Now, some of the best things that happen in the cooking world are mistakes, mm -hmm. learn from your mistakes, or accidents, or it's like, let's just try this because we're in a hurry, and it's like, right. whoa, best thing we ever ate. Now, the other day, we were in a hurry, and we took everything. We had leftover chicken, we had right. leftover pork. I grabbed some seasoning out of the counter mm -hmm. that I hadn't looked at before. I, randomly picked this up at our favorite store and I looked at it and I thought bourbon smoked garlic salt. Now I have smoked salt before which we're going to talk about today. Very long drawn out process you probably don't want to do it. And a lot of times you may go to the store and say why is this X amount of dollars? Right. Because it's a six to eight hour process with dehydrators and smokers. Right. It's a long process but to get this kind of a taste there is no shortcut. Now the glorious thing about this particular flavor is it's from Kentucky. It is from Kentucky. And you know what? I talked to these folks. We were so impressed. I talked to them on the phone. Now, we're going to show you the process of how we do it. Now, you're probably not going to want to do that. So if I were you, I would go out and pick up some Rattlesnake Hill Farm Bourbon Smoked Garlic Salt. It's Kentucky Proud. It's yum. Nice folks in Nelson County make that. It's absolutely wonderful. But here was our pleasant mistake. In fact, tell us the pleasant mistake. Well, we were working in the yard. So it was a hurry. So I just threw everything in a pot and I found your seasoning because you would use it on steaks. It was good. And a little bit of pepper coated it with some of this wonderful olive oil. And we let it bake for two hours and we were like, wow. Now, we loved it. Do you remember Bill when he was talking about olive oil? Now, we are thinking so differently about olive oil. We've always used it. Right. And we always liked it. But taking a drink, a taste of your olive oil, what a pleasant flavor. Even that back peppery taste that you get. Mm -hmm. But his delayed. is good. His is different. It's unique and it's tasty. 
and is winning awards all over the place. So is it not cool that we've got the food on this table, for the most part, mm -hmm. is from Kentucky. That's Large Marge. That's, That's right. our pig that we raised with the intention to eat. That is Todd Clark's chicken. The best. This is broccoli, cauliflower, potatoes, carrots, onions. This is one pan cooking. Mm -hmm. This is your whole dinner. Right. Now, we're gonna walk away from this when we're done because we're smoking something in the smokehouse. And you know, remember our whole process. In fact, if you're interested in building a smokehouse, we have a four or five part series where you can see how to put one of these things together yourself. All right, let's get this thing put together because it's gonna take about 90 minutes, anywhere from 75 to 90 minutes. Just check it, your pork needs to be at least, oh, 150. But man, I'm telling you what, when those flavors are all together, is there anything better? No, it's delicious. And it has the richness because, you know, we talked about the fact that olive oil brings out the flavor. And then when you put this on it and it just, the carrots are so sweet. And you got the meat tasty. juice, the juices from the meat mixed with it. So let's put this together, okay. get it going and start our smoked bourbon salt recipe. Oh, you know what I almost forgot? Your grandmother comes in mighty handy. She's yes, not she with does. us anymore, but she's still talking with us in her cookbook. That cookbook's amazing. There are so many recipes that we need to make all of them. Oh yeah. And today we found her apple cake recipe. Looks great and easy. It's probably the <laughs> simplest cake recipe I've ever seen mm -hmm. in my life. And the cake itself is so rich you don't have to put any icing on it, but maybe some confectioner sugar At on top. At the end, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to stack today. I almost forgot to tell you this. After we get this going for almost an hour, we're going to stack and put the 10 inch on top of that and make our, your grandma's apple cake. Apple cake. The meat in here, and what this is what I did before. I just kind of flipped it in olive oil. And if you want to go ahead and season that a little bit. Okay. Bourbon, garlic, smoked salt. And as you can see, we're just tossing these randomly in. I'm telling you, some of the tastiest things are sometimes the simplest. And this is definitely the case in this situation. And we're going to put just a little bit more olive oil and a little bit more seasoning. I'm telling you what, this is good stuff. I'm not kidding you. Just absolutely phenomenal. Again, 90 minutes, Yum. 3.50. We have dinner. How many's on the top, Nikki? How many's on the bottom? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. One more time. 17 on the top. Yep. And seven on the bottom. Eight on the bottom. Eight on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. 25. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Checking my smoke. Looks pretty good. It smells good. You know what? I'm going to make piles of this for ourselves. Now I'm still going to use his product, yeah. obviously, because it is a long, drawn out process. But you know, as you open this up, there was an actual note from your grandmother's kitchen. She wrote it to my mom. Kitchen. Yeah, back in the day, they used to write letters. That's oh, how yeah. you got stuff. And she actually, my mom actually taped it in here. And I think I was only like three or four. And it's a letter talking about how this is this great cookbook. It's got everybody in it. Give this to Nikki Lynn, save it for her when she gets older. And she listed all the pages and everybody. These Put Nikki Lynn's book away until she grows up and then give it to her so she can have recipes from her grandmother's aunts, cousins, and her mom. So this is all your family. You know what though? It's all hers. She yeah. put our names on it. I know everything in this is her best. And every time I open a page, I'm like, I remember that. This is all good stuff. That's the thing about family. Man, you know, it's so cool. You know, my mom's chow chow is, you know, is passed down. Right. And, and that's her deal. It's I mean, amazing. And it's, you know, it's, it's just fantastic to have these memories of people related to food. Because right. food's, food's the time you sit around the table and talk about each other and have family time. And, it's just cool to have those kind of memories. That's excellent. And right old there. recipes are the best. Oh, yeah. I think they're the best. Speaking of old recipes, you know, let's go ahead and put this together before we get the salt and everything out. All right, let's mix Perfect. this thing up. All right. Well, I got the book right here in front of me. And it, what we're going to start with, with two cups of flour, which I already have mm -hmm. in here. And if you want to go ahead and add, we have a cup and a half of sugar. All right, so we're putting all our dry ingredients together, she says here. Put all dry ingredients together. Now, in this container, I have got a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon and a half of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. All that. All right, well, now we're gonna take four apples and I got my little handy dandy. That is handy. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get those ready and get, I'm gonna take the skins off of those too. Okay. Okay, we mix the apples in. Now we're gonna have to mix that. So mix our apples with our- All right, mix the apples in. In the dry ingredients, yeah. Right. Kind of like apple pie a little bit, isn't it? Stuff. Yeah, it is. Separate. Isn't this neat to know that your grandmother did the exact same yes. thing? So now we're going to pour oil. Okay, how much oil is that? That's actually three quarters of a cup that she put okay. in. And then that's, go ahead and throw those two eggs two in eggs. that I've already mixed. Mm -hmm. 
How much vanilla? Vanilla, extra? we have got one teaspoon of vanilla. Mm -hmm. A little extra just because you like it? Okay. You know what? Just good. looking at that consistency, I know what this is going to be, and it's going to be good. This looks delicious. Now, everything we all, we always do it ahead of time to make sure it's good. This is the first thing we've just taken right out of your grandmother's book, and it's, it's interesting the consistency of this. Yes. And I think it's going to be like a heavy, rich, really am excited to see how this turns Me out. Me too. I always ate her stuff and it was delicious. I haven't had a chance to make it all. Looks there good you to go. Me. Now the great thing about stacking is we've already got our ones on the bottom. You smell every now and then you smell the pork chop? And I do. Okay. I can't wait. Ooh. What I smell now is garlic because our next step. Now this is for the really hardcore do-it-yourselfers. But the first thing we're going to do is smoke our garlic. Now what we did is we took off the outside layer. Now we're going to leave the root side intact because that keeps everything together. But cut off just enough to expose that garlic. Kind of like that. Yep. And then we're going to put that down like that on a little rack. Meanwhile, while we're preparing our garlic to be smoked, and we're going to do this now again. A lot of people see our smoker and think, okay, that's a regular smoker. That's a coal smoker. Now, I could, if I chose to do so, get the temperature up there and, and probably roll some smoke at, at higher temperatures in the low 200s. But for the most part, I want to keep this around 120 degrees. We're not going to get real hot in here. Let's take this and go ahead and put it in the smoker. All right, now we begin the process of putting the bourbon, three okay. cups, in the pan. We're going to reduce that down to what could fit in probably two and a half shot glasses. Really? Really reduce that down. We're going to concentrate that flavor. Then we're going to put it on the salt. Let's go ahead and put three okay. cups in here. Got my fire going adequately so I can get this up to a boil. It'd take you a pretty good while to reduce that down. All right, we're going to take that reduction, and I'm just going to kind of stir this up a little bit at a time. We just happen to have some pink Himalayan salt, so that's what we're using here. Go ahead and put a little bit more in there. And again, your reduction, and I would recommend that you do your reduction inside, bring it to a boil, then slowly reduce it down. It'll be a lot easier inside. All right, now we're gonna simply mix this up. We're gonna simply spread this out. I'm gonna put it in a dehydrator, about 155 degrees, until all the moisture is drawn out. All right, at this point we got about a cup a piece, and again, this isn't gonna, isn't gonna be a huge batch, but it's enough to do for a while. Let's put this in the dehydrator, about 155 degrees, for about an hour until all the moisture is drawn out, and then. We'll mix things up. Let's get right. that going. We we'll better check our cake and yeah, other I'm stuff. Hungry. Oh wow! Oh, oh, oh. Yum! <laughs> Look at that! Oh, the smell. Nikki, oh, that smell looks good. That. Oh, that's, that's good. That's good. All right, let's take this off and let it cool. Now, we get let it go a little bit long, close to two hours. Ooh, look oh, that, that looks good. Go ahead and pull us a right bone, the bone. stick it out. Get a piece of chicken. Piece of chicken, get some onions and carrots. All right, cut into that pork chop. That looks look, really look good. Look how tender it is. And that's a thick pork chop. Yum. Oh, my. That flavors it so good. So simple, so good. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. I could eat that once, twice, three times a week. Every day, how's the chicken? Delicious, falling off the bone. Now one trick we've learned, we didn't do this tonight, but if you really want to brown things up at the end, want to peek at it, you can really crank the heat up at the end if you don't put that last final browning on that. This was so tender, wow. so good. It's just where it needs to be. This That's is delicious. Perfect. 
This is one of my new favorite meals. Me too, and it's simple. You know what? The show's not over yet because we still got our garlic and our salt. But this is a good time to talk about our Facebook page. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Like it. Also, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Check out shows you might not have seen before. Click on shows, then YouTube, and guess what? You got hundreds and hundreds of shows and individual segments you can look at as well. And now, let's finish this up because we got some garlic to tend to. How about our mm. dessert? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yum. I kind of knew what we're going to have here, but this is the first time that we've ever cooked anything that we haven't tried. But the texture, it's almost like it's almost like those soft cookies you yes. get. Yes. This is exceeding expectations just from the consistency. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's dense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, wow. All right, that's stupid. That's really good. I told you every recipe in that oh, book's good. Wow. That every recipe's delicious. That's amazing. This mm. is not even right. Wow. That is absolutely delicious. How do you describe it? It's like cake, pie, and cookie know. mix. That is, that, yeah, it's like a really good cookie, <laughs> but the consistency is wonderful. You taste the apple. It's almost like a apple pie, thick apple mm. pie cookie. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> You gonna eat the whole thing? Thank you, Grandma. Ooh. No, that is really, you know what? I try to watch my sweets, but this is ridiculous. You like it? Mmm. Yum. It's not out of a box. That's delicious. Those are fresh organic apples. The sugar, the flour, boom, instant. That's the easiest recipe ever that turned that out really that easy. good. It's not out of a box. And you just need the powdered sugar. You don't need icing on that, boy. No, because it's very rich. You gonna stop? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do your magic. All right, we're trying to end the show here, and you're on your second piece. I can't help it. Are you gonna look at that? That's good. That. <laughs> and being outside too, I think it just enhances it. You gonna eat your second piece? I'm gonna let that set for a minute and cool down. Then we're gonna talk about the garlic. But you gotta try this. This is something <laughs> else. Can okay, I have one more bite? One. Before we show the rest of the yes. garlic. That's a pretty big bite. Oh, that's right out of the middle. It's a little bit darker. <laughs> Look make at you that. Happy? Look, look at that. I know. And the apples are perfect in it, aren't they? That really is. I'm not kidding you. That's ridiculous. You know what? That tastes like something <laughs> your grandmother would fix. Yeah. Because when I would walk into my grandmother's kitchen, who I kind of just remembered a few things about her kitchen. You know what I remember? When I walked into her kitchen, I smelled apples. Yeah. Always apples. And I smelled a faint hint of gas from her gas mm -hmm. stove. And, I, you know, a freshly struck match. You could smell that. And a few other things that I couldn't quite place. But that reminds me, I guarantee you, that was a popular recipe back in the day when you had you know, plenty of apples. Sim it's simple, flour, so sugar, simple. eggs, normal stuff. Really good. All right, I'm gonna hush, I can't quit talking about it. I think it. it's okay. the extra vanilla you added that made it that's special. That's what it is. You did it, you did it with the vanilla. <laughs> oh man, all right, that's that's in a class all by itself. That's really it's ridiculous. It's yours, I won't touch it, I'll yeah, let you have that's, it. That's that middle piece. Okay. But here's where we are with our garlic. It has been in the smoker for three hours. Okay. We're gonna take the salt out of the dehydrator. Mm -hmm. It's already, it only took it about a half hour at that right. temperature to really get all the moisture out of it. Now we're gonna switch and put the salt on a piece of parchment paper, on a cookie sheet, into the smoker. Okay. Okay. The garlic's out, we're gonna take it and we're gonna cut it into small slices all the way across. What do we have? We have fresh garlic that's been smoked. I could eat that. Now you think about, just smell it. Mmm. Hickory smoke and garlic, are Yum. you kidding me? Now think about finishing a steak with that. Yeah, that'd be delicious. Saute that in butter and a little bit of Maybe we should do that instead. Salt, <laughs> and some fresh cracked pepper and then put that on your steak. Yeah. Or put that on your liver and onions or put it on oh, wow. anything you want. That delicious. in itself is a beautiful thing. But we're gonna take it a step further. I wanna cut this into the flattest pieces we can. Just so we can dry slivers. those out, yeah, thin slices. And then we're gonna take those and put them back on this tray back in the dehydrator on 125 until they're absolutely all moisture is gone and they're they're firm. At that point, we're going to take them and put them in a food processor. We're going to grind those up into a powder. And when you use garlic powder, there you go. And this will be pure, fresh, smoked Kentucky garlic. smoked garlic. And now look what we've got here. Beautiful, wonderful smoked garlic cut up. My fingers smell delicious. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I could probably eat half of that, but you Me wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to talk to me for about a we month. We could kiss if we both ate it. No. No. Okay. It'd be bad. This 
goes on the dehydrator okay. for about a hundred, you know, I might go about 130 degrees and I'm gonna check it in about two hours, so on and so forth, maybe move them around a little bit. But when they're absolutely crispy at that point, they're very tasty. I bet. It's almost we like might a eat chip. a couple of them. Just a couple. But at that point, we let them rest. We grind them up into garlic powder. Now, you know what I've heard about garlic? Hmm. You should eat this. It keeps mosquitoes away. My grandparents Old ate it. Used so to we it. should eat it. People like garlic mosquitoes. pills. Yes, maybe yeah. we should just eat it. Yeah. No? I depend on the bats. Okay. When I see them. <laughs> Let's pop this in. A couple hours, we're going to have us some chips. Pretty good. You know what? That's not that's bad. Good. Now, that's a long process. Yeah. There's a lot of steps involved, and I mean, we've been here all day. You might not have a smokehouse, you might not have a dehydrator, but I'll tell you what we do have right here. Rattlesnake Hill Farm Bourbon Smoked Garlic Salt, made in Nelson County, Kentucky. Wow. I talked to him on the phone the other day, and you know, I, I love to find these people. And we just randomly bought this at our favorite store when right. we were shopping, and I didn't remember getting it. Then we had this recipe. Sometimes, sometimes those little random buys that you make mm -hmm. on the side being some of the best things in the world. That is one of my favorite meals. Mm -hmm. We'll have it two or three times a week. We cook it inside too. Oh, yeah. You don't have to do it inside. You know, it, we didn't crisp that one up because I wanted the pork chop to be real tender. Right. But if you if you put that in there, just a little more heat on the top and brown that up. You were just too hungry. You got yeah, <laughs> and you got to be careful because you can burn your vegetables right. too. But if you crisp that chicken up, you can even take that. You can take your vegetables out and put them on the side and then really crank the heat up and brown it on top. Oh, yeah. wow. So that is just like a conventional oven. You use it like that. And this was a long drawn out process. This is good stuff. It's been a long day, but the cake. You like that dessert, didn't you? It's gone. Cake. Did you eat it all? The cake. You know what? I really, I'm not crazy <laughs> about um, sweets, but we had the one piece. Mm -hmm. oh, I had most of it. Then you had your second. Then there was that middle piece that was really brown. Is there any cake left? Mm, one little piece. Okay. I usually don't gorge, but let me tell you folks, I've had a lot of stuff. That's probably, but with the, with the ingredients, I just really didn't think there's 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 no way they can be that tasty. But the consistency of that was like a big soft cookie you'd get at the fair or something, almost like a brownie. And it had apples. It was good for you. Oh, wow. Well, it's been a long day, but a fun day. And I hate to say it, but guess what? What? It's the time to tell the folks out there that it's all about good times, good friends, and really good eats. We'll see you next week with a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. And guess what? I think the grandkids might be coming down. Oh, good. I, I miss them. Uh -huh, I do too. <laughs> see you next week. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association and the Kentucky Goat Producers Association, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, Your Village Shop, Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement, 
Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987.